People always like want to use the Statue of Liberty for stuff. Uh, Statue of Liberty is not that big. I was like, you know, I was like, been there. I actually climbed up the Statue of Liberty in the tiny staircase a long time ago. Um, but it, anyway, this this is a big rocket, um, and it will get uh, bigger over time. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So that's I don't know if you guys watched uh, Kong versus Godzilla. Uh, it's like one of the most insane movies I've ever seen, but it's like kind of entertaining and it's sheer madness. And then, of course, yeah. Yeah. this is slowed down a little. So. <laughs> but that first launch did, did take, a, take a while to get off the pad. Just bit worried there for a second. I mean, when that took off, I was like, wow, I can't believe it took off. <laughs> that was my reaction. So I think it's uh, incredible that it, we, we took off twice last year. Um, I mean, even though I've been very you know, closely you know, involved with the Starship program from the beginning, um, and actually, like, I lived out here. This is my, my primary residence for three years. Um, this used to be a sandbar, basically, what we're looking at here. Um, and now it's got a, an advanced rocket factory and, and a gigantic launch pad and we've got a whole bunch of rockets out there. But I'm still amazed that it actually got put together and took off. I'm like, wow. Um, I mean, the a Starship is uh, more than twice the thrust of a Saturn V. It is by far the biggest flying object ever made. For, you know, with, with some upgrades down the road, it'll, it'll actually be, I think, probably over 20 million pounds of thrust. Um, and Saturn V is seven and a half. So it, it'll, it'll end up being three times the thrust of Saturn V. And it's going to fly a lot. It has to fly a lot. So it's, it's going to end up flying several times a day um, from many different locations in the world. And I think there's a pretty good chance that it, it does Earth-to-Earth -earth transport as well. Because the fastest way to get from one place to another on Earth is, you know, to get from here to the other side of Earth is an intercontinental ballistic missile. Uh, but just make sure you delete the nuke and add the landing point. <laughs> Basically, um, that's the fastest way to get somewhere. And then uh, between flight one and two, we made a number of, of massive upgrades. So the, there was obviously a massive upgrade to the launch pad. Um, so we've got like our many Niagara Falls here. Um, I mean, the, the water pressure is so much that if it went straight up, it would actually destroy the rocket. That's how much water pressure it is. So it's like, wow. Um, and it worked. Like, oh, actually, went and looked at, one of the first things I went and looked at after uh, the um, second launch was to check out the launch pad. Because obviously, the, after the first launch, we dug a pretty big hole. Um, <laughs> and, um, and, and honestly, it looked like you could just, it looked like there was no damage at all. Like, the, the, you could just launch again, basically, for the pad itself. Um, 
So it's great work by the team to radically improve the launch pad overnight. Yeah. The <laughs> people always like want to use the Statue of Liberty for stuff. Um, Statue of Liberty is not that big. I was like, I was like, been there. I actually climbed up the Statue of Liberty in the tiny staircase a long time ago. Um, but it, anyway, this this is a big rocket, um, and it will get uh, bigger over time. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So that's I don't know if you guys watched uh, Kong versus Godzilla. Uh, it's like one of the most insane movies I've ever seen, but it's like kind of entertaining in its sheer madness. Um, and um, the crazy thing is that, that our launch tower is bigger than Mechazilla. And it's going to do basically like the same thing, but with the arms, you know, like catch the rocket. And when I, I tell people like, yeah, we're going to catch the largest flying object ever with giant mechanical arms. They're like, there's no way that's real. I mean, we could give it legs, too. <laughs> just, just give it legs and have it tromp around. That'd be pretty cool. Um, so... <laughs> and then we're also going to build a second tower. Uh, we, <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna, this is this is we're going to really be launching a lot, and up, and we're going to be upgrading one tower while we launch from another tower. So two towers is important. Um, and there, was, there, there are actually so many upgrades between flight one and two that uh, it would actually take it like hours to go through them all. Uh, but one of the biggest upgrades was uh, going from uh, hydraulic to electric uh, actuation of the engines. So that actually uh, saved a lot of mass and complexity. Yeah, hot staging. I mean, hot staging was, was a change that was basically, I don't know, just really within a space of like th three or four months, maybe less, um, going from, or roughly that, uh, going from uh, previously just kind of like a, separating the rocket without anything. <laughs> Uh, and to, to actually lighting the upper stage engines uh, while the first stage engines are still thrusting um, and not blowing up the ship, which is, that was an amazing achievement. So I was like, wow, that's, and it worked. So Fly, Fly 2 actually almost made it to orbit. Um, so uh, in fact, ironically, if, um, if it had a payload, it would have made it to orbit. Uh, because the reason that it actually didn't quite make it to orbit was we vented the liquid oxygen and the liquid oxygen uh, ultimately led to fire and an, ex and an explosion because we, we wanted to vent the liquid oxygen because we normally wouldn't have that liquid oxygen if we had a payload. <laughs> so ironically, if it had a payload, it would have reached orbit. Um, and so I think we've got a really good shot of reaching orbit with flight three and then uh, a rapid cadence to achieve full and rapid reusability. And I mean, the, kind of the mind-blowing thing is, like, there is an actual path that we are on to make life multiplanetary. Can you friggin' believe that? Like, what? <laughs> I... Yeah, we just gotta get it done before civilization ends, but, <laughs> but like, I think we, I think it's gonna happen. Um, yeah, right here. So, anyway, so in terms of getting there, we want, obviously want to accelerate the production and testing, um, get to a high cadence. Uh, you know, for, for any given technology development, there it is, um, you know, how many iterations do you have and what is the amount of time between each iteration? So every time we launch, we learn, every time we launch or do a test, we, we learn something more. So increasing that cadence of launching and testing um, and it's always better to sacrifice uh, hardware rather than sacrifice time. Like time is the, true the one true currency. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with more startup and tech stories like this. This is Tech and Butter. Thanks for watching.